Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today I've got a really cool video to share with you guys. I'm going to show you guys how to both design and assemble this little light up stand. A lot of people have been requesting this since I shared it just a few days ago. Um, on this, uh, it is just a piece of acrylic and it's sitting on this light base here. I'll put an affiliate link down below to the um, affiliate shop on Amazon where I got these. Um, these bases are super cool. It comes with batteries. So that right now it's on battery, so it can be set anywhere you want in the room. Or it comes with an actual plug. So with the plug, you can actually plug this into the wall anywhere you want and then not use batteries. So that's super cool. Um, and lastly, it comes with a remote control. So you can actually change the colors. You can change the dimness, the brightness. And then if you don't want to use the remote control, you can just tap the little power button and it'll switch colors for you until you find a color that you like. So that's really neat. Um, um, one last thing when you go to build this, it's literally just one piece you slot in. What I would do though, is if you want it to be perfectly straight, as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a wobble here. It works great if you lean it backwards, but if you want it to be perfectly straight, just pull your acrylic out, put a piece of three millimeter sticky tape foam on there. Um, and if it's not thick enough, still put one on the back side, and then just pop it in there and it'll, it'll stay up straighter. So that's one thing that you can do to make it straight. One other thing that I didn't do um, is I forgot to invert. I don't use acrylic very often, but you, what you'll wanna do is invert your image. So this little grain part is on the back, um, but it still looks great this way, as you can see. But if you flip it around, it's a little bit smoother, and that way if people wanna touch it, they can't actually feel that, that grittiness and ruin your design. So just to remember that, I'll show you guys that in the design software here in just a second. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using Illustrator today. Um, and I'm gonna show you like a real simple version of this. I'll just use triangles instead of the trees here because the trees take a while to design. But I'll show you guys essentially what you do with that. Um, and then the stars and the moon, super easy. It's just a couple clicks. So. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I made this design, how you can make your own versions and change it up and make it whatever way you want there. Other than that, let's jump over to Illustrator. All right, you guys. So as you can see, this is the light design here um, that I just showed you at the beginning of the video. I'm going to show you a rough sketch of how to recreate this, but you can make anything you want out of these light up signs. This is just showing you a general idea of how to make it. So first up, I just created this bottom base here to show you guys what I start out with and what works best with my light base. So it's gonna be uh, 2.77 inches by 0 0.6394 inches, works perfectly for my light base. To do that, if you've never um, used Illustrator before, make sure you're on the rectangle tool here, and then you can just either draw it out and then retype in the measurements here, or you can just click once and then type in the measurements manually and create. A rectangle by itself. I'm going to delete these two since we don't need it. I just wanted to show you guys how to do that here. Uh, next up, we're going to need the circle for the top here. I'm going to click and hold on the rectangle tool. And then I'm going to click ellipse tool. And once again, you can either click if you know the exact measurements and type it in, or you can hold down shift, click, hold, and drag. And you can make as big or as little of a circle as you want. Obviously, we want to make it a little bit bigger than this base here, and we're going to be cutting the bottom part of the circle off. I think my original one is about 7 inches. I'm going to try 6 inches this time. The other one was a little bit big. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of line this up where we think it would be best. We want a little bit of an overhang. As you can see, it's going to overhang here and here. And we want to align this. So when we highlight both, Go up to the align tool here. If you don't have a line up here, you'll click on window and then you'll click on align and it'll pop up for you. But once you have that highlighted, we're going to align it horizontally right here with this button. And now that we have that, we need to chop off the bottom part of this, uh, this circle here. So what I'm gonna do to make it easy is just click the rectangle tool again. I'm gonna just draw a real big rectangle. I'm gonna give it a little bit extra space up here too. So let's just go up to about right here. And what we're gonna do is have this big rectangle selected and this uh, big circle selected. We're gonna to go to Pathfinder, 
And once again, if you don't have Pathfinder, you can go up to Window and then choose Pathfinder again, just like the Align tool. What we're going to do is we're going to minus front. What that's essentially going to do is take this rectangle and chop off whatever is behind it here, which is the circle. So minus front, and then that's how we get this flat shape here, as you can see over here. Now all we got to do is grab our circle, hold down Shift, and then move it and attach it right here. And we essentially have our uh, base made, and all we need to do is unite this together, these two, by clicking Unite. But I'm going to hold off on that because there may be some things that I want to change and have this chop off on the bottom here. So we'll get to that here in just a second, just in case. But essentially, what we now need to do is draw out all of our items that we're going to be using. So. For the stars, you just click and hold on the rectangle tool and then click star tool. Um, you can just click once, type in how big of a star you want. I'm going to just use the default here. As you can see, it's huge. Um, we're going to change that. We'll go back to your selection tool here. I'm going to hold shift so it doesn't uh, distort it. That's the only reason why I'm holding shift is uh, to prevent distortion. You can make these stars as big or as small as you want. We're going to go something like that. And then I just copied and pasted these. Uh, you can rotate them as well by grabbing the, the angle corners here. Um, the last time I just copied and pasted, or you can hold down Alt while you have it selected and move them, and it'll create a copy. This time I'm going to just hold down Shift and make these different versions, just to show you you can make these in any form that you want. Um, you can edit this, you can create anything you want. You can even warp it like this if you don't hold down shift, but I just like them to be cohesive. But you get the general idea, make as many stars as you want, like I did here. Now it's going to get to the harder part where we're going to have to start drawing by hand. So this is like the little pen tool here. You can just click on one point there to start it, and as you can see, it's going to connect. Um, so I'm going to go about halfway on this moon and then I'm going to click and then hold while I'm holding. You can drag to create like a curve. And then um, it's already curving automatically. If you need that curve to break, which uh, I'll show you here in just a second, you can hold down alt on that. But we're going to go something like this and we'll curve it a little bit extra. This is just a rough draft. You can go back through and change this. As you can see, it's still trying to curve. So what I'm going to do is hold Alt and click on that endpoint, and now it's a flat area. So I'm going to connect these two points, but I'm going to click and hold still so I can drag and make that curve like the moon there. And there we go. Now that we've completed it, we can go back to our selection tool to see what it looks like. As you can see, I kind of messed up this curve here. So you can go back to your curvature pen tool, and then you can select that node, and then you can kind of warp it and make it look as good as possible. Um, you can take your time on it, make it look better. Um, you can make it swoosh out more. Um, you can do anything you want. This curvature tool makes it easier to just grab a node and then you can keep warping it until you find something that works best for you. So something like this essentially will work. Um, and it, it'll change every time. Obviously, you're drawing it by hand, so it's going to look different each time. And you can keep doing it until you perfect it however you want. Now, the hardest part in this one is going to be the trees because it's just a, a series of lines. So you can just uh, start out like something like this and then just kind of do like jagged paths randomly. And it's going to take a long time to create a tree. So hopefully you get the general idea of that. So for this, I'm gonna just use triangles, kind of like what I mentioned earlier in this video. I'm just gonna use triangles for the tree. I'm gonna draw these out really quick. And you can pretend that I flared it out just like I showed you. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna create your trees and you can create them different and create them the same, whatever works. And then you can hold the alt or copy and paste them. And you can kind of space them out something like this. And then once you have them all attached, you can make them nice and big. So they kind of flare off the screen here. Something like that right there. As you can see, I'm kind of matching this up. And uh, now that they're off the screen, you're going to just merge all of these together with this Unite button. As you can see, they're all merged. That's what essentially is happening over here. It's merging that together. 
And then let's say if um, if these trees are smaller, I'm gonna just make them smaller so you can see what's going on here. Let's say you, you need it like this and then you have all this extra space down here. What you wanna make sure is that this extra space flares off the bottom in this situation. So just grab that rectangle tool again. I always like to use my rectangle tool, it's the easiest one. And then we're gonna just essentially connect these points here and then I'll draw over this too. And you want to just draw over the whole area and we're going to connect all three of these things we just drawed together and we're going to click the unite button again and as you can see it flares past the actual top of the screen here the reason why i did that is i want to remove this inside section so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this circle in the back undo Control c to copy it and then whenever I have it copied, I'm going to show you guys the inside of what it looks like here. So I'm going to get rid of this cut line and make it a fill here so you can see what's going on. So what we want to do um, is we essentially want to get rid of these trees here from the bottom. Because what we want to do is have this black area be the hazy um, engraved area. So if you highlight both of these and then you click the minus front here we got rid of that hazy area and it created a new layer that's over top of our stars and moon. So we can create the layer here and we can move that back underneath everything so we can see what's going on. But remember how we copied the circle on the background? The reason why I copied that is just so you can go edit, paste in place, and it puts your cut line back where you need it. And then what we can do after that is we need to pop these little stars out so you can click on your um, your actual engraving area here click on a star and then click minus front and it created a new layer that's why that one star disappeared but we can go back to that we're gonna click on the star minus front click on the moon minus front now we need to move that back underneath the star click on that star again with the shift button held down so you can select them both and then uh, minus front again and that's essentially how you make that. Now that it's all one engraving here, you can make sure it's locked right up here in the top where it has the measurements. And you can kind of shrink it if you want this halo effect around the outside like I did here. And then you can add whatever name you want on here. I'm gonna just copy it and paste this name right here. And you can put it in place wherever you want it. Um, and you essentially made your sign here. Lastly, what we need to do is merge these two together, these two lines here to complete your sign. And we can click merge. And the very last thing you wanna do here is you want to invert your entire engraving, like I said earlier in this video. So the haze is on the back side of your design. So what we're gonna do is have both of those highlighted, click on object, transform. We're gonna click on reflect and then make sure vertical is selected here. And as you can see, it is now reflected. So it'll look like this on the back side, or the technically the front, and then this is the back here uh, where all the engraved haze is gonna be. So that is essentially how you make this design. Just make sure you're using these same measurements if you use um, the base that I link uh, it may be slightly different because I got my base like two years ago So just a heads up on that just measure your base with like a digital caliper if you do end up making a bunch of these uh, Tag me in it. I'd love to see what you guys are making with this and I would like to know that it's helping you guys out um, Other than that we'll catch you guys in the next video, and I hope you enjoyed this style video here